Happy Sabbath to you. Happy Sabbath. God has been good, hasn't he? Yes. I was just thinking about this summer. I have done about 18,000 miles of flying this summer. 18,000, not by choice, but by obligation. So I'm here just to give God thanks for flying mercies. Amen. And John, I must tell you that some of the time I did think about you. <laughs> you on US Air, I want you to know the three year lines I flew on this year, they had the smoothest landing. Just want you to know. So just in case you're looking for whether or not you were shot down or that was US Air, that was a smooth landing. But God has been good to us and we're here again. I don't know. Okay, Laurie, I have some idea that you might be peeping into things that I've been doing and that is making me nervous. <laughs> because as I was contemplating this message, I said it would be nice to sing, give me oil in my lamb, keep it burning. You know, and I said, well, I won't do that, but here you are, and I really appreciate you singing that. So that's the one. Today we're going to look at a passage of scripture, and it's one that is meaningful to us as Seventh-day Adventists. It's a passage, and it's a parable, and we'll talk a little about parable and the interpretation of them, and you know, to see how can we truly interpret this as to what is it that Jesus wanted his disciples to know, and what is it that he wants us to know in 2011. Alright, so as our custom is, if you have a Bible, whatever form it's in, we want to shame the devil to let him know that we are armed and dangerous, and we are ready for a fight, because He's going to come in here today, and he's not going to tell you that you shouldn't do, but he's going to distract you, maybe of the financial obligations that you have or you should have, or what your worries are. So we just want him to know that we're going to keep our eyes and our minds focused on the Word of God. So here we go. This is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. It's in my hand. It's in my hand. It's in my head. It's in my head. And it's in my heart. It's in my heart. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. I invite you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 25. And today we're going to focus on the first 13 verses. Matthew 25. So let us pray before we begin. Dear God, our Bibles are open to you because we want you to speak to us. We will not leave this place until you have done so. So speak to us through your word today and in the person of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for hearing us, and now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. No doubt 9-11 has impacted our lives greatly. Since 9-11, significant changes have been made to flying, how we fly, the investigation, and all the way that we get on and off an airplane, 9-11 has made a significant impact on our lives. You go through an airport now, and certain airport, they practically x-ray you right down. They see everything just to make sure that you do not have anything that would threaten the lives of the people flying on your flight. And it's all under the idea of preparedness. Comes under preparedness. But it's not only 9-11. We have the hurricanes and the 
tornadoes, and even snow that have caused us and have altered the way that we are prepared. But even some of these natural disasters have shown us that our preparedness is not enough. Just not enough. As I was going through and making sure that just getting material and preparedness, I came across a website, BePrepared.com. And you can find just about anything to help you be prepared, prepared for disaster. Many of it is about camping, but it's being prepared. They have a battery charger, John, that will charge your dead battery in five minutes. They also have a shovel that has six different ways to it, so you can dig a hole in six different ways. Or maybe you can do it simultaneously. I don't know. They also have a porta potty that you can take with you. But best yet, they have a can of fresh air that you can buy for $88.95. Oh it's all about preparedness. And we live in a world where we are driven to being prepared. We have it on the financial market. Somebody tells you, you need to be prepared for the rainy day. It's all about preparedness. But I want you to know this morning that preparedness or being prepared is not limited to the secular world. Jesus told his disciples that you need also to be prepared. He said, watch and be ready. For just when you think not, the Son of Man comes. Preparedness. And these two chapters, Matthew 24 and Matthew chapter 25, are known as, quote unquote, the eschatological chapters in Matthew. They deal with end time things. Matthew chapter 24 tells you all of what the signs you will see and what will happen before. And Jesus ends it with watch and pray. And then we come to chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven is likened unto ten virgins. This is how the kingdom of heaven is. It is unto ten virgins. Five were wise and five were otherwise. You see, God is trying to tell us how the kingdom of heaven is like. And he therefore chooses to do so by giving us a parable about ten girls. See, for you to understand this whole parable, you have to understand the Jewish culture in which this took place. When a man or a father saw a young lady that he thought would be a good fit for his son, he would either send the son or one of his highest servants to go and negotiate with the bride's father. Sometimes this took some time. How much, quote unquote, the dory should be? How much, what is it that he wants for his daughter? And negotiate that. That's what he did. And up from the, the agreement, up from the agreement, the bridegroom would go back and spend the next year amassing the things that he had agreed to. The bride knew the date 
when the bridegroom would be coming back, but he did not know the time when the bridegroom would be coming. He knew that. But at the end of this year, he would go and find the bride. He would take his bride because he has amassed everything. Maybe it is donkey, this is camel, it's olive oil, it's whatever it is that they have agreed upon and they go back. Because the bridegroom wants his bride. Turns out. And while he's doing that, the bride is preparing herself to meet her bride. So she's getting the pedicures and the manicures and all the baths that she's taking. She is just looking good for her bridegroom. She knows that he's going to come today, this day, but she does not know what time he's coming. Usually weddings are taken in the evening time. He, she knows that it could be any time from sunset onward, but not the time. So she's there preparing, and the bride May's job was to make sure that they had light, to light the path of the bridegroom unto the bride, so he could see her. So that was it. It is within this context. And Ellen White said that as Jesus was there talking to his disciples, he could look over and see the preparation in this house for this celebration. He knew that something was going to happen, and he said, the kingdom of heaven is Latin for ten virgins. And take note that there's something instructive, that right up front, The quality or the qualification of the virgin is made. Five were wise and five were foolish. I must let you know that the word translated foolish is the same word from which we get our English word moron. They were wise and they were foolish. And I want you to know that as we look at this parable, not everything in the parable has an interpretation. But we want to get to the message of what it is that Jesus wants to do. So here we go. There's something I'm saying to you about preparedness. And God has lightened this kingdom of heaven, his coming to a marriage supper whereby the bride is waiting but she knows that the bridegroom is coming, she just cannot tell you when he's coming I don't know if that sounds like us as church we know that Jesus is coming is that true? We just don't know when he's coming. Is that true? Yes. And this is something that you and I have been anxiously waiting for. We hear this, those of us who have grown up in church, we heard it as soon as we could recognize something that Jesus is coming again. We sing it all the time. And then we have a series of songs that reassure us we know not the hour of the Master's appearing, but we know that He's coming. And Jesus is saying, my kingdom of heaven is like none to this. We know He's coming, we just don't know when. And that puts us into some responsibility. There's work for us to do. So here's what He says. They had lack. And while they were waiting, 